Hello, welcome to another Toy Box audio video. That's it, just a video. What we are looking at, this is going to be a block look. Let's just look at our block. That's why it's called block look. Let's look at the block shifter included in the Atomic Pack recently released. Now, shifting is a load of stuff. When you think of shifting, we think of frequency shifting, pitch shifting, and whatever else shifting. Um, so this tries to include as many as we could reasonably include in a shifting block. So what do we start with? Let's start with the FFT pitch shift. So that's the source material. Another lively Brazilian guitar leap from the Apple Leap Collection. So, so here's the default settings. What have we got here? We've got pitch which was at zero, obviously, originally. We go up, we go down. We can go up four, like four octaves. We can go down four octaves. That's pretty enormous range, I would say. Size button, size knob here is the FFT block size. The larger the block size, the fewer um, frequency artifacts you'll hear um, but you lose time granularity so by putting drums through on, on a larger block size you might lose some timing of the drums if you are so inclined to be so observant of your drum timing smaller sizes however mean that you can do some drum stuff we'll get to it in a minute and it doesn't and it doesn't um, because it's not heavily relying on drums don't rely on frequencies really they don't they're not they're not you know you're not looking for tones when you're listening to a drum you just want energy so smaller block sizes can work with that but you lose frequency range so if we get the biggest one get the biggest and most massive size and the most smoothest smoothing which what this does is it if i turn it down you can hear the stuttering, those are all of the FFT windows being reconnected by the FFT operation. And we can, they've all got hard edges, like a, like a brick. We can smooth those edges out by the smooth function, and we get this beautiful sound. We can also go up a long way with this crazy guitar sound that ends up sounding like cat meows and harmonica it's, what, it sounds like crazy things but I love it sounds like a harmonica anyway uh, and then we can go four octaves below as well into the area where your pet elephant might be interested to listen so that's the size, that's the smooth. We can also drive the signal into the FFT algorithm, so it just becomes all interesting. So it's got more harmonics. And then the FFT algorithm might do something interesting with your added harmonics. Let's break it quickly, let's break it quickly. Okay, that's broken enough. That's the FFT pitch. What we've got next, granular shift. So similar kind of thing. We've got the size of each of the grains. You, I assume, wouldn't be here if you didn't know what granular synthesis was, but in a nutshell, cuts the sound into very small pieces and plays them back. And we can make those pieces really tiny with this knob here. And by turning the smooth down, we can also make each of those, the edges of each of those grains square and clicky and ugly. Which immediately becomes highlighted when we change pitch. Either up or down. Oh, so sad down here, very sad. Anyway, so with the smooth knob, it gets rid of those. Clicky, not clicky. Same up, same going up. Smoothie. Smoothie. Crackly. 
no crackles. With this, though, as well, it's cool because you can feed it back into itself. Yay! So let's just bring... I should feed myself into this because I want to hear me going, yay, being fed back. So we're feeding back the signal into itself and because we've got a pitch shift on it, it's continually feeding the pitch shifted version back into itself and shifting it up again. So you get these kinds of crazy effects, which you might recognize. I recognize it from an old TV series called The Boy From Space. Other people might recognize it from singles and music, their favorite bands. But I think Craftwork used some of these noises on snares. But it's a continuous kind of feedback of a granular shifter. How, how mental does it go? I'll tell you what, let's put drums through it instead. And then this kind of stuff happens. It's lovely. You are tear the sound. Let's tear the sound apart. Rip it to pieces. Okay. That's the granular. Let's look now at the incredibly noisy frequency shifter. And what this does is slightly different from all the others. Notice this knob, rather than it being semitones, which is what the, we have here, and in the pitch shift, we have frequency shifting. So we're basically telling it how, to, how far to shift, how far to add frequency to each of the ranges that you know how far to shift the whole frequency so what have we have here what have we have let's just turn the feedback up because there's a feedback button feedback that sounds like sounds I've never heard before what happens if we turn the frequency up in this feedback this but then we can also delay the signal that's being fed back there we go and we'll see that that delayed fed back signal is being frequency shifted up each time so it kind of goes up forever almost if we could hear it right look going quite a long way up we can make that distance Okay, and we can drive it into the frequency shift as well. Which just adds. Adds fun stuff. Especially if you distort it like that. Ooh, that was fun. I wonder how that's going to get recorded. Right, let's move finally onto the ring mod. And again, this is another feedback e mode. So let's just make sure the dry's okay. Yes, the dry's okay. That's the wet. Right, this is interesting because we have a few different styles of ring mod here. If you just look at the knob that pops up with a pop up of text, crossfades between three modulation signals, three modulation styles, forgive me, digital ring modulation analog ring modulation and amp modulation which is just a multiplication of one signal against the other we have an oscillator in here that's performing the uh, side function this is what the frequency this is the frequency of the oscillator that's running the side function so there's a couple of different ring mods here that sounds like it could be useful Let's shift this to 
this one, which is kind of interesting as well. This is the analog style. Also, we have a feedback here. And the time is attached to the feedback knob. So it, as you can hear, the delay the delay time is smaller in this side of the knob and larger over here. We also have the drive. So if we turn the mix back to that, oh, and then we have the third amplitude. There we go. And we do, and we do nice things, don't we? We do nice things like this. We do nice things. Right. We also have the ability, as you can see on here, to plug in a pitch. So let's do that. We can do that from the MIDI. I've got a signal here set up to do that. Let's just... So already it seems to be working kind of instantaneously. So all I've got here, let's have a look at the port connections. I've got something coming out of the pitch, going into the pitch control here, and this now is controlling the pitch. This basically, but kind of offset of this. So that's the source. And again, well, this is very clean because it's the it's a reasonably large FFT, smoothed smooth edges, and this is. You can tell this is like an organ noise, isn't it? Let's move it to, I think I've got another string noise. That's me playing a scale. That's me playing notes. That's quite cool, isn't it? Do the same. The granular. I'd also feedback a short distance as it goes into crazy note territory otherwise. Hmm, isn't that lovely? Oops. Okay. Mm, okay. That was probably too long for an operations manual look, but uh, there you go. I think I covered all the aspects of the shifter, not including the obvious uh, modulation possibilities. But uh, there's the knobs, there's the functions. Go off and have fun. Thank you for watching.